This year, hackers have started using a new strategy to distribute malware that you definitely need to know about. It's a bit more convoluted and complicated, but also clever. But at the same time, if you know what to look for, you can usually be able to protect against it relatively easily. So in this video, I'll explain what it is, how it works, and of course, how to protect against it, although just knowing about it is the best way. So for some context, Microsoft this year actually disabled by default macro scripts in Microsoft Office programs like Word, Excel, and that was a very common vector that hackers would use to distribute viruses. They would like attach a document to an email that would have a macro embedded, which would run a script and install some malware. However, Microsoft announced last year, actually in October, that they were going to be disabling it by default. And in July 2022, they filed up and disabled macros by default. However, as you'd expect, hackers have already started adapting to this using additional techniques. So you can actually see some of this research done by a company called Proofpoint, where they have this graph that shows the reduction in malware campaigns since the initial announcement using macros and the increase in a different method using container files that we'll talk about. And here's another graph showing a different file type, link files, which are also being used in this technique. And you can see how popular they are becoming now. Another important thing to note is hackers have been a little bit more sophisticated recently. And apparently with a lot of these, they're actually interacting with the victim via email a little bit before actually sending the virus payload or the doing the main technique. They'll kind of interact with people, get them thinking thinking they're a real person first and then send it. So don't just think this is gonna be some kind of obvious out of the blue email with the suspicious attachment that you might usually be used to. So with all that being said, let me actually explain how this attack works. And also keep in mind, as I'm explaining each step, it might seem very convoluted and you might be thinking, what, who would go through all these steps and fall for this? But remember that in the real world, this whole process from receiving the email to being infected might only take a matter of seconds. It's just the way I'm explaining it is in a lot of detail, so it seems like it's gonna take longer than it actually will, so just remember that. So the first step of this attack is the victim is gonna receive an email asking them to look at some document. And again, the hacker may have been already talking to this person a little bit beforehand. And they're basically at this stage going to try to get you to download a zip file, but it's not gonna be that obvious. They're gonna try and trick you into it. So the first possibility is it's going to be a fake DocuSign or similar document signing email. Like this one is DocuSign and it says, review this document, but it's obviously not actually DocuSign and it goes to download a file. And all of these are real examples gathered from this Proofpoint company and also a company called Palo Alto Networks. So that's where I got these. Another interesting thing they might do is actually attach an HTML file. So you open that, it's basically a web page file and that'll also have some text saying, here's the invoice, whatever, try to get you to click a link, and that will also take you to a download. And the reason they do that is to probably get around filters that are directly looking for links in the email itself. They might not be scanning for it in attachments. And third, they may just attach the zip file to the email directly. The next thing that happens is presumably the victim is going to open the zip file. But the thing is that in Windows, if you double click to open a zip file, it just opens like any other folder. So if you're not on the lookout, this isn't gonna necessarily raise any red flags. It looks like you just opened a folder. Also be aware though that apparently in some cases, the zip file is password protected and in the email it says, oh, here's the zip file and it's password protected and here's the password. And the reason they do that is because a password protected zip file will be able to evade scans. So be very suspicious if you get a zip file that's password protected. Next, here's where it starts to get tricky. Inside the zip file is going to be some kind of container file that the user is probably not gonna be familiar with. Recently, the most common one has been an ISO file, which is actually a disk image file. It could also be a .image file is another type of disk image, or maybe it could be something else entirely if they change it up. But regardless, it will probably be named something to look like a document, like invoice is one example they've been using. And most people at this point don't know what a disk image is or an ISO image, and Windows by default doesn't even show file extensions anyway. So you might not know what that disk icon means, and you might just say, oh, I guess it's some kind of weird document I've never seen before. And then the victim will double click to open this ISO file. And then next what happens is behind the scenes, after you open this image file, it will actually mount that image. So if you were to actually go and look at the other drives on your computer, like under this PC, it would actually now show as a virtual disk. But the thing is, if you 
click to open this, Windows does all that automatically and takes you right into it. So it again, to the user, looks like you just went into another folder. You don't realize that all that happened. So now we get to the final step of the attack. But remember at this point, the user, all they think they've done is clicked into a couple folders. It probably took like two seconds, despite me taking a while to explain all of it. It went by really quick, so it might not have raised any red flags. So now once you're inside this container, which again, looks like you're just in a folder, there's going to be a couple files. One is gonna be just a Windows shortcut. Yes, like as if you right clicked create shortcut, it's gonna look like that, but it's also gonna have the actual virus payload, some kind of executable, and it might actually be hidden. So you might not even see that, but the link file or shortcut will be called something to entice you to click it. Like it'll be called attachment or document, something like that. And when the user clicks that, that actually has a command embedded in the shortcut to run the other executable file. And that is what infects the system. And if you're wondering why it has you click a shortcut link instead of just clicking the virus directly, it's basically just to get around the virus scanners. And it might be running not an exe file, but it might be a DLL file. Not gonna get into it, there is a reason for it though. Anyway, regardless, after the person clicks the shortcut link, which again, might be named like a document or something, you are infected. It runs the virus and you're infected. So how do you actually spot and defend against this type of attack? I'll try to give some tips that are a little bit more general in case they do switch it up a bit. First of all, no matter who you are, I would highly recommend you enable Windows to always show file extensions. So to do this, you can do it in Windows 10 by clicking this checkbox here in Explorer. And if you're in Windows 11, you just go to this menu drop down and click this here. And this is basically just gonna let you always know exactly what type of file you're dealing with. Even if not just for security purposes, but in general, I would like to know exactly what type of file I'm opening, you know, what program is gonna open it. And it just gives me a little bit more information, but it also does protect against viruses that may be named to disguise themselves as another file extension. For example, it could be like example.docx.exe. And if you don't have file extensions enabled, you might see the docx and think, oh, for some reason it's showing the file extension, but I guess it's a document and click it, not realizing it's not actually that. Now, the next general tip that is directly related to this is if you're gonna click on a file at all, always know exactly what it does. And if you don't know what it does, don't click on it. And even if you don't have file extensions enabled, the details view of Windows Explorer, where it shows like the list with the columns of data, it'll still have that type column and that'll tell you what type of file it is, but you still probably wanna have the file extension too. Because, you know, a lot of people might just give it the benefit of the doubt. They're like, I don't know what this is. It's called invoice, I'll click on it, seems fine. But this way, if you simply recognize, I don't know what this is, then you don't have to worry about it. You won't click it. And for the third general tip, it now looks like we really have to be careful and watch out for Windows shortcut files. And definitely pay attention to this. This is important. There's a few layers to it. So we already saw that shortcut files, if you click on them, they can be used to execute a virus file that could even be hidden. You might not see it. But an important thing to understand first about shortcut files is behind the scenes, they're actually a .lnk file. So yes, Windows shortcuts do actually have a file type. However, even if you have the setting to view file extensions always enabled in Windows Explorer, it will not actually show .lnk files on shortcuts, even if you have all the other ones viewed. And the reason you need to know that is because I could see theoretically a hacker creating a shortcut file that looks like a document by naming it example.pdf and you might click it thinking, oh, well, I have file extensions enabled. I see that's a PDF file. It must be safe to click. But behind the scenes, it's actually example.pdf.lnk. And it's actually a shortcut that goes and executes a virus. But you didn't notice that there was actually that shortcut symbol on the icon and you didn't realize it was a shortcut. So now we have to watch out to see if any kind of attached files or whatever are secretly a shortcut file. And you can again do that by either looking at the type column, it'll say a shortcut, or usually the icon will also have that little shortcut symbol there. So definitely watch out for that. And I mean, the main ultimate general tip is don't click on suspicious links that you weren't expecting or attachments, even if they're zip files, whatever. If you weren't expecting it, you don't know exactly who this person is, doesn't matter what they say the file is, don't click it, maybe consult your IT department, 
see what they think about it. Now as a quick recap for some things to watch out for in this attack, if you see any kind of disk image file, either ISO or image, that's pretty much a dead giveaway. No one's gonna be sending you a image file, especially if it's supposed to be a document, no way. Also, like I just said, if you see a shortcut that's named like a file or any kind of shortcut really, don't click that. And third, remember that they might change up these file types. Don't think, oh, well, it's not an ISO file. I guess it must be safe. It could be an image file. I think they're also using .rar files. That's another type of container. Just if you don't recognize it or it's not a document, don't click it at all if you downloaded it in the first place, which you probably shouldn't have. So I know this attack was a little bit more complicated and you might not remember everything, but hopefully you'll remember something. If you do come across this, it'll just ring some bells to be more suspicious. So if you did find this helpful, definitely give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Love to hear from you. And if you want to subscribe, also consider clicking the bell next to the subscribe button to enable all notifications. I post only about twice a week. You don't want those getting lost in the rest of your subscriptions. Now, speaking of zip files, if you want to keep watching, the next video I'd recommend is where I was talking about how a lot of file types you may be familiar with are actually zip files. For example, did you know that Word document files are actually just zip files renamed? I'm not kidding. You can click that and see what that's all about. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.